check it out, Casper! Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in, Casper here, and today I want to ask the question, is TF2 dying? Except, I don't want to ask that question specifically, because that question has been asked a lot. In fact, I myself asked the question over 18 months ago now, and the very fact that that question was asked 18 months ago, and we're still asking it, just goes to show that whenever we think TF2 is dying, it quite simply isn't. Instead, it occurred to me recently that we shouldn't sit here and expect TF2 to slowly drift away and rest in a deep and dreamless slumber, but what I personally suspect is going to happen is a series of extinction events, for lack of a better term. So it's no secret that Team Fortress has had some updates that have left the community members upset with the direction of the game. The biggest of these poor updates is of course Meet Your Match, which dropped at the beginning of July, and as I write this video and record it in the middle of November, we're still seeing regular updates to Team Fortress 2 to try and fix the mess that was left behind from this update in July. These updates have been attempting to fix things like the time it takes for people to join a match, the ping of these matches, the location of the servers, the balance of the matches, both in terms of player counts and player skill, which is obviously very difficult due to the fact that team switching is disabled and auto balance is disabled, and they are still trying to fix the extremely, extremely, extremely poor mode which they've got the audacity to call competitive. Now while that might sound unduly harsh, the fact of the matter is that nobody asked for this. Prior to meet your match you could choose whatever server you want, on whatever map you want, in whatever location you want, and you could choose any team you want. And despite all of that, the quality of games, in my personal experience, was a lot better then than it has been since the casual matchmaker has been deciding what games to put me in. So from an outside perspective, this update has absolutely no reason to exist. It has literally made every single thing that it is trying to do worse. So this is an example of what I mean by an extinction event, because this literally pointless feature overhaul causing majority inconvenience over its previous incarnation, which is quick play, is going to make people quit the game. Not the entire population, probably not even enough people for you to notice them leaving, but certainly a wave of people leaving this game and not coming back. For many people who were bored and thinking of quitting anyway, this was their last chance. So after this large extinction event, let's say, what does Valve do to try and save themselves? Well, they can either revert the changes, which cause people to say, that was the last chance for me, or they can release high quality updates of additional features, essentially to win people's back. So, what better opportunity for this update than the highly anticipated annual Scream Fortress event? Well, in this super important Halloween update, they decided there would actually not be an event, and they would instead just reuse last year's. The only content which would be of any value in this update was the morale missions, which, after about an hour of the update being live, didn't work. So, to save face, Valve released a patch to fix Mirage missions late on a Friday night and then they went home for the weekend. Except the patch didn't work, and people continued to have no Mirage missions for the first four days of the event. Now I know working on the weekend isn't something anyone should be expected to do outside of their contract, but given that working from home is quite common in the developer industry, plus the fact that an update had launched late on a Friday which didn't actually work, plus the fact that the botched update was the biggest annual event in the Team Fortress 2 calendar, I think it was fair for a lot of people to expect a fix sooner than the following Tuesday. So, to say sorry, Valve extended the event for another week or so. That's all well and good, but for many, that would be too late. They've already been extinct. That's two major updates in a row where something catastrophic has gone wrong on the launch, where for many, the game has been literally unplayable, and for many people, they still are struggling to find matches within 10 minutes or more. And all of this isn't even touching on the highly anticipated competitive matchmaking update. It had been through nearly six months of beta, and it had some of the most highly respected competitive community members in Valve's ear guiding the update, so expectations were obviously high. With two massively popular competitive matchmaking platforms in Dota and Counter-Strike, all Valve had to do was literally copy the exact formula from either of those games which has been tried and tested, and TF2 matchmaking would undoubtedly improve the reputation of the game. Even if you're not into competitive, if there's a strong competitive mode in the game, then it's going to raise the profile of it. And yet somehow, 
what they released was a pile of burning turds. There's no doubt that the competitive mode was the last chance many, many retired or retiring people were giving to Team Fortress, and even now, more than three months later, it's an absolute mockery of what it's supposed to be. So the reason we're seeing extinction events and not a sudden, steep, unrecoverable drop in players is largely due to the fact that Team Fortress 2 is a free-to-play game, and it's got a steady stream of newbies picking it up each week. So, even when these extinction events happen, there's always a gradual stabilisation of players as new guys pick up the game. It's for these reasons that every following Team Fortress update has got extra pressure on its shoulders. For every weak update or broken patch, it will be Team Fortress 2's last chance for many people, and another small extinction event, unless of course the update goes well. And that's why the Pyro update is so important. Amongst the community, the Pyro is widely considered the weakest class and most in need of new weapons and or reworking in some of his slash her core mechanics. So, unless the aforementioned Pyro update is indeed an absolute humzinger, then many people are going to have given Team Fortress 2 their last chance, especially considering the fact that it was announced along with Meet Your Match many months ago, and especially due to the fact that it's one of the main reasons that there was no Halloween event this year. After that, depending on how it goes, it will be the last chance for many. And then what? Well, people will continue to get bored and burnt out, which is the same for any game, and given Valve's track record of lazily produced updates, poor communication, and the community's perceived neglect, we will probably continue to see these extinction events. So, is Team Fortress 2 dying? No. Is everything Valve doing wrong the last chance in the eyes of hundreds, maybe even thousands of community members each time? Absolutely. Team Fortress 2 will never die until the servers are switched off, and even then, there'll be community servers for years to go. So that's my point of view, guys. What I think we'll see is these sort of medium-sized dips every time something goes wrong. There'll be a slight growth then as new players come and Valve don't do anything, and then there'll be a little dip again, and then a slight rise, and then a little dip again. And I think this will continue on, essentially, ad infinum, until one day nobody starts Team Fortress 2, but I think that's literally more than 10 years away. That's my guess. Anyway, thank you, goodbye.